Okay, now I'd like to focus on the general solution for the sine ratio, the cosine ratio, and the tangent ratio for both, uh, for all three of those. And um, we are going to focus on the general solutions. And I advocate for the general solution first before we move over to the specific solution. Because if it's the other way around, it's very easy to try and take shortcuts and then you miss some of the answers that you need to get. So we start with the general solution and then we move over to the specific solution. So first very basic example is, let's call this number one. And they want us to give the general solution for where sine x is equal to let's say 50 um, let's make it 0, 0,75 okay so that's the question sine x equals 0, 0,75 for which values of x does this take place get the general solution the very first thing we need to do is we need to calculate the reference angle um, and you see our symbol here, or this number is positive. So we will work in the two positive quadrants for the sine function. But the first things first is your reference angle. Just take a calculator, you say shift sine 0 0.75 equals and then your reference angle is 48,59 degrees that's your reference angle now keep in mind that we're working in the first quadrant now for the first answers then you say therefore x equals 48,59 plus k times 360 where k is an element of z. Okay, let me just explain this part first. Okay, in the first quadrant, we know 48.59 will give us 0 0.75. But this answer is repeated every 360 degrees, as explained in the previous video. So make sure you see the previous video before you see this one. Um, k, element of z, means that k is a whole number negative or positive so it can be negative one zero one two three four doesn't matter but as long as it's a whole number so this means that whatever we have here we have an infinite amount of numbers every 360 degrees added or subtracted because k can be a negative as well so this is our first answer or we need to have a second answer because we have a second quadrant where sine is positive. So over here we will now say or oh, x is equal to and remember the second quadrant is 180 minus the angle. In this case the angle is our reference angle and we still add k times 360. There's no reason for me to again write down k element of z because this k and that k is the same one. It's the same constant. We don't have to define it again. So now we just have to say 180 minus 48.59 and we will have an answer then as 131,49 plus k times 360 degrees and both of these answers um, together forms the answer for the general solution for the sine function so this is our first example okay now let's look at the second example so it's again a sine function sine x equals negative a half and the first thing to notice is there is a negative. With our cast diagram, we understand that sine is negative in the third and the fourth quadrants. 
So we are going to work in those two quadrants. Now we need to get our reference angle. And the reference angle we are calculating without the negative because we already took into account that we are working in the negative quadrants. So you take your calculator, you say shift sine 0 0.5 and you will get your reference angle as 30 degrees. Now we are ready to write down our general solutions. So first step would work in the third quadrant. Therefore x equals 180 plus our reference angle which is 30 plus k times 360 k element of z. Now before we simplify this one I always leave a space or two open and I write down the second expression as well because normally when you get here and you get an answer you're so excited that you got the answer that you forget to write down the second answer. So that's why I advocate for this. So write it down in the fourth quadrant 360 minus my reference angle which is 30 plus k times 360. Now we just simplify. So 180 plus 30 is 210 plus k 360. So that's our first answer. And over here, 330 plus k times 360. And those two, um, those, are, those are final general answers. So this is a general solution to this question. So now you know how to apply um, to solve for the sine ratio for a positive and a negative number. Uh, we are going to focus on the cosine ratio now and also do the same. Okay, our, fir our first cosine question. Solve for x if cos x equals to 0 0.3. First thing is write down your cost diagram and where is cos x positive because there is a positive there, it's not a negative. We know the first and the fourth quadrants. Next step, reference angle and we can do that by using our calculators. Shift cos 0.3 and the reference angle is 72,54 degrees. Okay, now we write down our two solutions. The so first solution is x equals 72,45 plus k times 360 because the period of the cos graph is 360. And remember to include this k element of z. If you don't include this, you lose a mark. Just keep that in mind. Now remember, you are so excited you got the answer, but do not forget the other um, part of the answer. So leave some space open, say or, and then x equals. And now we're working in the fourth quadrant. So this will be 360 minus my reference angle, which is 72,54 plus k times 360 and we'll have a final answer now so you've got 360 minus 72,54 and that will give you 287,46 plus k times 360 degrees and these two will be your two general solutions to this question Okay, so the fourth uh, example looks like this. Cos x equals negative 0, 0,9. So now, the cos diagram. You can see that I use the same steps over and over and over again because it really works well. So I encourage you to do the same. So we notice it's a negative. So where is the cos function negative? It's negative in the second and third quadrants. Now we calculate our reference angle. So shift 
cos 0 0.9. Remember, we do not look at the negative. Now it's already applied it. And you will get a reference angle of 25,84 degrees. Okay, now we're ready to do the solution. So our first expression will be in the second quadrant. So it would be x equals 180 minus 25,84 plus k360, k element of z. Leave some space open. And write down the second expression. 180 plus 25,84 plus k360. And now we just need to write down our final answer. So it's 180 minus 25,84 is equal to 154,16 plus k360. 360 and this one will be 205,84 plus k times 360 and these two are our general solutions to this expression so the next example we are working with the tan the tangent function tan function and solve for x, uh, get the general solution where tan x equals to 0, 0,8. And now remember your cost diagram. But with the tan function, its, its period is 180 degrees. So technically, we are only looking at the first two quadrants. And if it's positive, like in this case, we will work in the first quadrant only. So for tan, you always just have one solution, one expression. So, reference angle. Second function tan of 0 0.8. And we get it as 38,66 degrees. And that then means that our final answer is 38,66 degrees plus k times 180 not 360 this is a tan function where k is an element of z and that's the final answer to this question so the last question we're working through with this specific video is tan x equals negative 0.4 get the general solution First step, cast the diagram. Keep in mind we are only working in the first two quadrants of the tan function. And now we're asking ourselves where is tan x negative? And we know that's in the second quadrant. Okay, so reference angle. So shift tan 0 0.4. The negative is already included so this is 21,80 degrees that's our reference angle now final expression remember second quadrant so it will be x equals 180 minus 21,80 plus k times 180 because it's a tan function k element of z now we can quickly calculate Our final answer that then means x equals 158,2 plus k times 180. And that's our final answer and the last question to this video.